No wait, no wait, no wait, no wait. No Christmas song. Oh, well, you know what? I'll wait till Christmas time to play it. Anyways, the best, the best Christmas want. song is my Chemical Romance's no, no, version of All I Want for Christmas. All I Want for you. Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. the uh, best Christmas song <laughs> is uh, Santa Baby crossover with my neck and my back. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, at any rate, hello everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hello. Hello. Birth the kit will always be sexy. Uh -huh. I mean, she's not wrong. I don't know. She anyways. Yes. Damn right, I'm not. Uh, mm. Damn right, I am not. This stream is sponsored by Joshua. Get in here. <laughs> is he not here? I mean, I'm just saying that. Not being digital. I'm saying that. I'm saying I'm saying that from a spiritual <laughs> perspective. Now let me get the fucking Xenoblade chain attack music off of the, off of the goddamn thing. Oh, there's no music playing anywhere. Wait, can there I mention no one last thing? This week's episode is sponsored no. by Joshi. This so you better show us the money. This week's episode is sponsored by Linkin Park's In The End because this is the 21st anniversary of the release of that song. Can't believe it's you're, good. you are as yeah. old as Linkin Park's In The End. Yeah, yeah, baby. I can't oh, believe Lord. Linkin Park's In The End can now legally drink alcohol in the... United States of America. Lincoln yeah. Park, yeah. Is, yeah. Park is now our kiss and Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. Did you know that, uh, uh, from what I understand, a lot of the Yakuza games take place during December. So that means, by default, Yakuza games, a lot of them are, in fact, Christmas, Christmas games. Christmas games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is I saw, I saw Joshi say the word Yakuza and saw Zaz Wait. immediately <laughs> unmute. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that those would be reindeer games. I was like, wait, oh he's talking. He's talking to me. He's yes. speaking my language he's, right now. My man's spinning my language. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! He is spending that language. He's uh, I remember language one Christmas, yeah. I spent it the entire time playing uh, Kwame Two, and that was a pretty good Christmas. <laughs> hmm. It was actually one of the best Christmases. My best Christmas was when I got some really cool stuff for Christmas, including a lot of anime stuff, but then I had some serious stomach virus, and it you know, was just everywhere. You know who's but not having a good awesome Christmas. Christmas? You know who's not having Whoa. a good Christmas? Morgana. Is it Christmas? I don't think it's close Might to not, Christmas. But what am I, not gonna I don't happen. think they have you know, Christmas You know, yet. Kong getting sick on her best Christmas is weirdly apt. What my favorite, uh, My favorite <laughs> Christmas memory was waking up to play... Fable 3 for the Xbox 360. Oh, yeah. fucking yeah, brother. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> you guys are young. Wait, did they sell uh -huh, you're old. Saturnalia uh, in the Middle Ages before they invented Christmas? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what my favorite Christmas memory is? 
What? Fucking nothing. We don't celebrate Christmas. Uh, <laughs> My favorite Christmas is when we got Skyrim. Because we just played Skyrim for like eight hours straight for the next week. <laughs> you know what? Mm. Kakoni is a Christmas game. Anyway. <laughs> uh, this December, okay, look forward to the Sakonia reading. We're just gonna do it anyway. Fuck it. Fuck it. Oh. Nope. <laughs> that that wait, when are we doing Sakonia? We're gonna do it in December. December apparently, according to Orange. This December? Yeah, this December. December. We're doing it right now. It's already we're December. We're not going to finish Fada by that time, are we? I, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do, but we should probably just fucking rip off the band-aid that is Sakonia, because, like, that part two is not coming out any time in the fucking foreseeable future. That shit yeah, cool. is not happening. <laughs> Isn't there you like all be in your thirties when that comes out? Yeah. Are you saying you're not looking forward to Loopers too? Uh, Ryukishi 07 will pass Loop away, harder. and as we okay. look at his belongings, he will then reveal that he, I didn't write the rest of it, and thus <laughs> Sakonia will never be concluded. Hmm. It's just uh, a little note of Ryukishi saying, oh, "I'll write then, it after I'm done uh, with the Higurashi stuff." And then all right, class, it's been twenty minutes. Yeah, okay, we got no, it. Right. It's been 10 minutes. I can't read a clock. Anyways. But it's, but still, point valid. <laughs> go ahead. Go. Yeah, and then you drop the snow globe. Let's go ahead and do this thing. I think it's you that's gotta do it. I I know I'm doing it. I'm just seeing it. Oh, I thought already. it was Todd. Nope. No, it's me time, baby. Let's get this bitch moving, yeah. <clears throat> Most people would dismiss such a claim as madness, and I almost did the exact thing. But there was something strangely enchanting about her voice. I found myself slowly drawn into her tale, listening intently to her, wo her word. Yeah, to her every word. The more I heard, the harder it was to believe she was lying. Before long, I was convinced she was the daughter of God, a saintess, a saint whose blood had miracle powers. Her first cry ended, ended a lengthy drought in the village where she was born. Her blood cured the sick. She rolled up one rolled up one sleeve and to show her arm to me. Practically every inch of skin from her shoulder to the tips of her fingernails her fingers uh, was scarred from where she was had been cut. According to her, the scarring had once been far worse. I had improved with the uh, application of ointment. Every single one of those scars, she said, marked a person who had sought her blood. And I believed every word. There was something, there was something about her that set her apart from the rest of us normal people. Like she was some higher being. They were not self-inflicted wounds, not the marks of someone who would try to take her own life. The symbols of great sacrifices she had made. She offered to give Nelly her blood, and without a moment's hesitation, I accepted. Hey, Nelly, I'm back. And I brought someone with me. A saint. A saint? Yep. She's here because medicine hasn't been working for you. She can perform miracles, so she's going to cure you. Miracles? That's right. Her blood has miraculous healing powers. Mother? You're not my beloved sister. Oh. 
Fear not, my beloved sister. Hear my word, and do as I say. You must have faith for the miracle to be performed correctly. I give you my blessing, that it may be bestow upon you unto you salvation. I give you my love, and I give you belief. Hear my words. I hear them. This body was created not in a mortal womb. This flesh is not the flesh of man. This blood is not the blood of man. The water that flows through these holy veins flows from the river of creation. Have mercy on them, O oh Father. May the infirm find you comfort in your warmth. May the destitute find reprieve in your generosity. May flesh bring nourishment and health unto this girl. Bestow upon her your blessing, O oh Father. Morgana held a pale hand above Nelly's mouth and, at hesitation, sliced her own wrist. Blood slowly trickled down her middle finger from the cut. Creeping into the gap between Nelly's bluish lips. I stood there, chanted by the scene. It was like I was witnessing some kind of ritual. I wasn't sure, however, whether to describe it as scared or profane. Watching the fresh blood trickle from the cut on her wrist made me break out into a sweat, feeling like I was violating a taboo. My knees rattled, and I could barely stand on my own feet. Needlessly, needles pricked my hands. Thoughts slipped through my fingers before they could fully form. I had crossed the line that wasn't meant to be crossed. Had I stepped into territory man was never supposed to enter. In time, I stopped processing Morgana's prayers as words. became nothing but a rim rim hold on real quick I need to drink water Take me to church. Let's go. <laughs> me when there's a rhythmical sequence of bouncing around in my head. <laughs> Rhythmical. Oh, I, fuck, I was saying it right the whole time. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Actually, Rhythm Michelle. It became nothing but a rhythmical sequence of sounds bouncing around in my head. My line of sight grew gradually narrower. Are you all right? 
the ceremony is complete. Uh, 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 how's Nelly? She is asleep right now, but she should awaken soon. Uh, oh, good. My blood has the power to cause miracles, but you must remember that the miracle is predicated on your faith. So, are you saying we need to worship you? No. I am merely God's progeny. Your praises and prayers should be directed at my father, the Lord God. I should get going then. Uh, hey, uh... Hmm. Thank you very much. When Morgana had said I had, would never be able to understand or empathize with her, she had not been lying. Having only heard her tell of it, I would only believe there was room for me to close the gap between us. Though that we still had enough in common. But seeing it with my own eyes, Feeling it with my entire being. I no longer had any illusion of us being on the same plane. As I gave her my thanks, my voice was audibly trembling. Come on, get up, there's milk. Head. Uh. What's it to look? Am I making a funny face? Are you good to be up and about? Yep. I woke up this morning feeling wonderful. Feel my forehead, Mel. See? No fever. Is it... it's gone? She actually performed a miracle. Oh man. I saw that on the screen. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, holy shit. Woo! Uh, all right, we're good. So, so I, I want to know that I saw the mouse cursor that symbolized, "Hey, we're loading a bit," and I went, "Oh no!" Yipes! Okay. Oh, the not Con responding. Continue, yeah, continue. I only remember bits and pieces. I remember a really pretty saint lady showing up and giving me her blood. That's how she remembers it. Her memory's pretty hazy, huh? Then I got this warm and fuzzy feeling inside me. Then I had this really strange dream. What kind of dream is There were a whole bunch of lights floating all around me. And they were reaching into all sorts of different colors. It was the most wonderful dream. That doesn't help me understand at all, Nelly. That's a good dream, and that's what matters. It must have been the Saint Lady's power at work. 
must be, yeah. I'm so relieved you're feeling better, Nelly. Sorry for all the trauma I caused you. But now everything can go back to normal. Yep. All back to normal. He wants to thank me? Yeah. Nettie's insistent I let you meet her. So you can. so she can show you how her gratitude. So if it's alright, would you mind coming to supper sometime? That would probably not be wise. Huh? Why not? It would hardly be pleasant having to eat in the presence of a face as grotesque as mine. And I doubt your sister would react well to the sight of it. I don't think it would cause any problems. Nelly isn't the kind of girl to judge someone by their looks. I don't think. Perhaps not, but to her, I'm a saint, not a normal person. In her mind, she thinks I'm beautiful, doesn't she? Uh. We must maintain that illusion. It is essential to the miracle that her faith remains unwavering, and on some level, that faith depends on her idealized image of me. You think so? Though our time together was brief, I could see it in her. She is a girl, the great love beauty. Perhaps the same could be said of you. I don't judge people by how they look. It's what's on the inside that counts. Hmm. I'll take you at your word. Thanks. So, uh, are you sure you don't want to come? I really shouldn't. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, okay. Why in the world am I feeling relieved? Nelly recovering was a huge weight off my shoulders. Now, everything could go back to the way it was. Quiet and unremarkable. I could finally go out and get a real job. Forget about my old life. Live like a regular gold commoner. That was what I was going to do for the both of us. The problem was, Nelly hadn't actually recovered completely. She was in nearly perfect health for the few st first few days after drinking Morgana's blood. But soon, her fever came back. She stopped being able to get out of bed, and to top it all off, she started having lengthy coughing fits. During some of them, she coughed off little bits of blood for them. I nearly had a panic attack. So I rushed down to Morgana's cottage and told her what was happening, to which she responded with a quizzical tilt of her head. 
Lay's health meant any for everything to me. It certainly wasn't the curiosity, uh, uh, curiosity her head tilt seemed to make to be it out to be. But it didn't seem to bother her at all. The miracle took place, but it didn't persist. That doesn't make much sense. But it's true, she can't get out of bed. And it's not a problem with her faith. I've been teaching her the word of God every night. And she absolutely believes in you and her saint. Lower your voice. I will perform another miracle for her. You... you'll do it again? I will not forsake those who are in need. And it'll stick this time, right? I cannot promise anything. But why? Your miracles are supposed to be temporary? Are they? Whether they are or not is decided by you and your sister. My only hope, though! Please do not worry. If the second blessing is not enough to cure of her of her ailment, then I will visit and give her my blood as many times as is necessary. I will gladly give her every last drop of blood in my body. I assure you, my father does not want to see two young souls like yourselves torn apart. And neither do I. We should get going. All right. For the second time, Morgana had Nelly drink her blood. And for the second time, she was healthy again the next morning. And for a second time, she fell ill again shortly thereafter. Her fever returned. I went to get Morgana, and she gave Nelly her blood. Deco repeated it again and again. And every time I had to watch her go through that ceremony. It was... it was exhausting. And I wasn't sure I could handle it much longer. I started thinking maybe there wasn't anything s sacred about any of this. That it was a blasphemous... that it was as blasphemous as looked from the outside. I was making a girl cut her own wrists and feed my sister her blood. Nothing about that sounded right. But I had nowhere else to go. No one else to ask for help. When I was with Morgana and listening to her words of reassurance, she, without fail, wiped away all the doubt I had. It wasn't until after she left that the wave of regret hit me. I wasn't sure what was right and wrong anymore. I wasn't sure what to do anymore. Every time I went to see Morgana, it got more and more difficult to look her in the eyes. I stopped asking her on walks as often, and I stopped trying to have chats with her, not so much out of a sense of guilt. Because I was getting to be afraid of her. Hmm? One of those straining days, someone knocked on the door. I hadn't asked Morgana to come down that day, so I wasn't sure who could it be. 
Nelly was asleep in her bed, so I quietly rose from my seat and made my way to the door, trying not to wake her. Who is it? Hello, who's there? I had an inkling of a suspicion, but having, having been raised in such a sheltered environment... I didn't ex understand exactly how dangerous it was to thoughtlessly open the door to anyone who came knocking. I pulled the door inward a couple of inches and tried to peek through the crack. Uh, and out of nowhere, someone grabbed my shoulder, shoved me, helpless, helpless to resist, into the house. A man stood there above me. Oh, what do you think you're doing? What do you want from me? I, I don't have anything valuable. I, I'm just a regular old peasant. I am not here to rob you. What? You're in contact with the witch, are you not? Uh -huh. The girl who lives by the lake calls herself a witch. W witch? I, I don't know any witch. The only one who lives there is a saint. A saint? I was told she was a witch. But regardless, there's a girl who lives there with miracle blood. No. Uh, Looks like I've got the right person. What? What? What do you want from me? I want you to help me. Huh? I need you to lure the witch out into the open. Uh, uh, why do you need that? Because I need her blood. I need to get my hands on the witch's miracle blood. Then go ask her for it yourself. Why should I have to help you? She won't open the door for me. But you. I seen you talking to her. You seem to be quite friendly with the witch. Ugh! Taking little walks around the lake. How? I need your help. Uh, it, it, wh what are you going to do? Once you have... Once you have her... Outside. I have orders from the Lord to take her captive. What? The, the Lord? Why would he... That is none of your concern. You expect me to buy that? All I need from you is to get the witch out of that house. Why would I? She doesn't trust me. I could always force my way in, but there's a chance something might go wrong and I can't risk it. If she hears your voice, she'll open the door, yes? The witch trusts you, unlike me. With your help, there's no risk of anything going wrong. I... I... No, I... You barge in here and tell all me you want to capture her, and you think I'm just going to agree to help? Like hell I will! Oh, don't worry. You'll get your share. You need the witch's blood too, right? I don't care about getting a share! You're... You're asking me to deceive her! I don't care what you think she is. She hasn't done anything wrong. So no, I won't help you capture her. You leave me no choice then. What? Uh. He approached the bed where Nettie slept. Drawing his sword and pressing it, the tip against her throat. It happened so quickly and without any warning, my mind couldn't keep up. I stood there. Mouth, mouth half open like an idiot. If I were courageous, if I were gallant and brave, then maybe I would have 
grabbed him, pulled him away from Nelly. But my legs seemed to be s s severed from my mind. They were frozen to the floor like two useless rocks. You have two options. Either you say no and protect the witch. Away. Or you can help me capture her. Get away from her right now. And if you choose the witch, I kill the girl. Get away. Make your decision. Get away from her. You have until the count of ten. If you don't choose, I kill the girl. <sighs> ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Uh, uh, six. Five. Okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll help you! So get your sword out of her face! Don't kill her. I thought you'd hold out until the last second. Uh, well, what are you waiting for? Let's get going. Uh, uh, get moving. Uh, uh, you pitiful little boy. I felt like jumping into a lake. I couldn't make sense of how I ended up in such a position. A few months earlier, I had been living back at my p family's estate, hardly a worry in the world. Nellie had been healthy and happy. It had, hadn't been exciting, no. But I had figured that was how things would always be. That one day, I would fall for some noble girl. Nellie would get jealous, and I would have to spend several days or even weeks pacifying her. Everyone would be happy, a life free of troubles. As that was normal, and I was normal. So what was I doing living in some tidy cottage far from home? Feeding my sick sister miracle blood. What was I doing walking beside this barbarian? What was I doing at all? I was conflicted. Part of me hoped that we would never arrive to the lake. And a part of me wanted to get there as quickly as possible so I could be done with all of this. I am plotted on no quicker and slower than normal. And we arrived at Morgana's door in short order. <clears throat> Irrespective of my own selfish hopes, the thought of what was going to happen next filled me with a crushing sense of guilt. I may have been afraid of Morgana, but I had no grudge against her. I was actually quite grateful to her. She was still healing Nelly, even if the ceremony to do so inspired fear in me. She didn't hesitate to cut her own wrists open for Nelly and for me. She didn't grimace or even frown, though I knew it had to hurt. I knew damned well she wasn't a bad person, that she hadn't done anything to warrant being taken into custody. She might very well have been a genuine saint. But there I was, selling her out because a man with a sword threatened me. <laughs> oh, Father, if thou was in heaven, please forgive me. What I am about to do, please, please forgive me. Quit sniveling. You want her to get suspicious. But I, you, how? I can't. You, uh, please, oh God. 
Oh! Stop crying. Uh, uh. Would you rather I kill you here? Uh, uh. Just close your eyes. It'll be over before you know it. <laughs> Do it. Calm the witch. <sighs> Who's there? Um, it's me. I... I'm not here about Nelly today. I am... Um... I'm sorry for being so distant lately. I want to talk things over. I thought I heard a faint, a faint gasp through the door, and then she responded. I want to talk to you, too. Why? Why did she have to want to talk now? She had always been so curt, so rational, so quick to cut down my fantasies. Never one to get emotional, sentimental. She had always given off the impression being something greater than a mere human. Always been aloof. Never giving any indication that she thought anything of me at all. So why? Why did she sound like a normal girl now? Why was her voice trembling slightly when she said she wanted to talk? Why now of all times? Get back. No. S stay away from me. What? That's your share. Should last you long enough. <laughs> Why? Why did you take my arm? What do you mean by share? Oh. Why? Uh, uh, uh. It all happened in less than a minute. I told her I wanted to talk, and she opened the door. Then I heard a sound like the wind flapping past my ear. 
The next thing I knew, her cottage was covered in blood. Never once did I expect anything to happen how it did. When he said he wanted to capture her, I took it to mean exactly that. I hadn't thought he would turn brutal. That he would do something so horrific. After that man cut off her arm, Morgana tumbled to the floor, floundering about as he watched, blood trickling down the curve of the blade in his hand. Her screams were indistinguishable from those of a normal person. <coughs> Kneeling in the grass at the lake shore, I vomited and I vomited and I vomited. The things I had seen in that cabin were far too much for me to handle. I tossed the arm, Morgana's arm, the man had given me into the lake. What else am I supposed to do with it? It was an arm, a human arm. You would have to be insane to go around carrying someone's severed arm. I tried to convince myself it was all a dream. Some terrible nightmare, but I still, I could still feel the warmth of her skin on my hands. The warmth of her blood on my fingers, dragging me back to reality. Uh, 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 uh. My mind couldn't keep up with the flood of thoughts and emotions and images. I wanted to close my eyes, but I was too afraid I would find the bloodbath in the cottage on the back of my eyelids. Which left me with nothing to do but wail. I was horrified at what I had done. I knew that I was the one who had set it all in motion. If I had kept quiet, Morgana would have had her arm wouldn't have had her arm cut off. But I didn't want to admit it was my fault. I didn't want to accept that I had caused it. I I did nothing wrong. It wasn't my fault. I was he he threatened me. So it's all my fault. I had no choice. I didn't do anything. I frantically scrubbed the blood-soaked cloth, clothes in the lake as I watched the red cloud spread. I knew I was defiling something pure and beautiful, but I, my awareness of that fact was slowly dissipating like the blood through the clear water. By the time I had gotten all, my, all the blood off my clothes, the sun was beginning to set. I came back to my senses at the sound of bird chirping and quickly recalled that I had left Nelly alone in that at the house. My legs were shaking and I could barely keep myself upright, but remembering her gave me enough motivation to drag myself back home. If she hadn't been there waiting for me, I seriously might have thrown myself into the lake instead. Mel? What's the matter, dearest Mel? Where have you been? Mel? I'm so sorry. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Uh, 
Will you ever be able to forgive me? Yes, ma'am. I never meant for this to happen. I'm so sorry, please. I'm begging you, forgive me. Mm. I'm begging you. Where were you not able to get my medicine? Is that what you're crying about? Uh. It's not that big a deal, man. I'll be... I'm just fine. Honest. I'm alright. <laughs> Thanks. I... I wanted to forget everything. I wanted to forget about my involvement, about the horrible things I caused to happen. But whenever I lay down to go to sleep, I heard her screams. Morgana's animalistic screams. I saw her cottage, blood splattered everywhere. I felt her severed arm, still warm in my hands. From that day on, what sleep I got was hardly restful. Nellie probably didn't notice anything through her feverish haze. But I'm willing to bet I looked like hell. Praying time would cause the memory to fade. I started looking for doctors again. Instead of clinging to miracles, I would try to have Nelly's sickness cured the way normal people did. At some point though, all that money I'd been given started running out. If I'd thought about it for two seconds, I would have seen it coming. I hadn't exactly been a frugal when my attempts to find a cure for Nelly, nor had I been especially concerned about the money before she fell ill. I was so used to living like an aristocrat, and I hadn't succeeded in breaking those old habits. which left me with only one thing I could do for Nelly, be with her in day, day in and day out. Every day that passed, I lost a little more hope. If I couldn't do anything for Nelly, and she died, I would be utterly alone. And that, that was what I scared me more than anything. The nightmares were eating away at me, leaving me with nowhere to run. And if I didn't have someone there with me, I wouldn't be able to hold myself together. And after three or so days of me sitting by Nettie's bedside, hardly moving, there was a knock on the door. Who's there? Who's it? Ah, there we go. Okay. Open the door. Unless you want me to kick it down. <laughs> My suspicion was correct. I couldn't think of anyone else who would come and visit. But what I didn't know was why he had come back. I... I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Open the door. Leave me alone, please! I want nothing to do with anything with you! Open the door. No, I am not letting you in for any reason! Okay then, I'll break it down. <sighs> Don't! My sister's inside sleeping. I don't need you waking her. Then open it. Ugh. What 
What do you need? I did everything you asked me to already. What happened to the witch's arm? I... I, I threw it. I threw it away. You really think I was going to keep that? A person's arm! What's going on? Do we have a visitor? Nelly! I should get them something to drink. No, don't worry about it, Nelly. Get some sleep, all right? Can we go outside? I'd really rather not talk in here. Fine by me. So, that's your sister. Explains why you look so much alike. That's none of your damned business! You wanted the miracle blood to cure your sick sister, do you not? And you're telling me you threw the arm away. <sighs> Are you interested in getting more blood? What? What? We're taking the witch's blood, turning it into a medicine, and selling it through the church. S selling it? You're doing business in a house of worship? No. I suppose we're technically giving it away. But we're asking for ties. So really, it's the same thing. Uh. I'm not from this land, so to me it looks no different than a business, but the people here, they see it as charity. The land, the Lord says that if you assist us, he'll provide you with the medicine we're making. The Lord? Why, would the Lord be? Well, if I know, because it seems like good money. <laughs> So, will you help us? You're going to make me get my hands dirty for you again. I, I cannot, not again. Oh, right. I forgot to mention one detail. You don't have a choice this time. Huh? You know about the miracle blood, which means we can't let you go unattended. If you say no, I have permission from the Lord to kill you on the spot. Why? So, will you help us? <laughs> or will you die here? Uh, 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 what was the right choice for me to do? Should I have fought back and died? Should I have tried to run? Should I have taken my own life? I'm sure you've heard enough to know by now. That I'm a weakling, a pushover. I didn't have the spine to do anything but agree to meet with the Lord. He told me about the mansion. And he gave me one of the sea of th set of three keys. I wanted so badly to get rid of the key. But with the man's shadow constantly hanging over me, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Now, not when I could be the next one to end up losing a limb or two. There was no way I could have disobeyed them. And... That's everything that happened six months ago. 
Every day since I arrived here, I've brought Morgana breakfast and supper. She doesn't say anything, but I saw it in her eyes for the first time I stepped in through that door. How could you do that to me? I've never looked her in the eyes since. Because I'm too afraid of what I might see. And that is how I ended up here. So he was threatened. He didn't actually want to cause Morgana harm. That's no excuse what he's done now. See, what did I tell you? I'm not at all the brother you thought I was. Mock me, ridicule me. Call me worthless, a coward, a terrible person. Go on. What are you waiting for? But you were threatened, man. He said he would hurt me, hurt you. That's the only reason you went along with him. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't do anything wrong, dearest Mel. The other man is the bad guy, not you. You did the best you could. You didn't have a choice. The terrible man forced you to do everything. Nelly. You didn't do anything wrong, dearest Mel. No, I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong. I had no other choice. That's not true. All you're doing is closing your eyes. What? You mustn't coddle yourself. What was I supposed to do then? I mean to my mouth. Did you really do the best you could? Did you even once try to do something about the situation as hopeless as it may have seemed? <sighs> could you not even conceive of any other options? Could you not have come up with something else to say at Morgana's house? Something that might have given her even the slightest clue that she was in danger? But... When she opened the door, did you do anything? Were you, did you even so much as attempt to stop him? My legs were shaking so bad, I couldn't move. There's no way I could have stopped him. But at the very least, you shouldn't have fled. You should have stayed and told her the truth. That you weren't here there willingly, and maybe you, she wouldn't have felt so utterly betrayed. But, but he was there. You think I could have actually stayed there with him? Not a chance. And it's not like Morgana would have... She opened the door because she trusted you. Uh, uh. She isn't the easiest person to read, but she was opening up to you. And what did you do with that trust? Stop it. You, you've made your point. Please. It's not all Mel's fault either. If anything, he's a victim. He was just trying to protect me. Will you listen to anything he said, Nelly? You were not Mel's first priority. He did what he did for his own sake. Well, what did you expect me to do? Pull courage that I, I don't have out of thin air? So what's wrong with self-preservation? There was nothing I could do 
I could have done to stop him. I'd love to see you try and do any better. Then maybe you'll understand how scared I was. How little I could have done. It must be nice to be an outsider. To talk about my experiences like you know anything. Analyze my decisions and go on about what I should have done. You don't have a damn clue how terrifying it all was. How I felt tough going through it. Oh yeah, you're right. It sure would be a courageous thing to do. To sacrifice your life for someone else. But you know what? People like that only exist in stories. You don't actually understand that. You just want to give me crap for not being perfect. Do you want my pity? Is that all you want? If I tell you I feel bad about you and oh how hard it must have been, will that satisfy you? I... Do you not want to know what you can do now? What's even left to do? Nothing I do is going to make her situation any better. It won't make her arm come back. All is not yet lost. Open your eyes, take a good long look inside yourself. Think about what you can do. Stop sitting on your hands, telling yourself it's too late. There's still time to make a difference. You just have to commit to it, to act. I don't think you're an especially bad or cowardly person. I think you're an ordinary young man. It might sound like I'm telling you to do the impossible. But soon the time will come when you must make your choice. When you must stand up and take some responsibility for what you've done. No one's childhood lasts forever. The good days are long be behind you before you ever realize they've passed. When faced with the consequences of your actions, you should not have turned and run, but held yourself accountable. It is, perhaps, a disproportionately large burden for you to bear, but it's fast approaching, and you need to make a decision. Find your courage. Set Morgana free. Mel. No. But even if I open the door for her, it's too little too late. She'll never forgive me after. Is her forgiveness the reason you should act? No. It's penance for what you've done to her. Atonement for your sins. Whether she forgives you or not is beside the point. The question on the table right now is whether you are going to do the right thing. And what about her blood? That a saint's blood nearly won't. You don't... You don't have to worry about me, dearest Mel. My life isn't so important that I want to take someone else's way to keep it. I, I'll think about what I can do to help you. It's partially my fault, after all. So please, Mel, set the saint is free. Your quiet life is built on a foundation of lies. And I know that by now you've realized there's no real value in a life like that. You wanted to do something about this. You sought salvation. Salvation? But who... who would give it to me? I already told you I would. But why? Because I promised you. You expect me to believe that? Yes. If you choose to sit here and wall in your regrets, there's no going back. 
Now is your only chance to make a change. Mel. Oh, all right. I'll help. I'll help you. Set her free. Dearest Mel. I knew all along that that was all I needed to do. But I could never bring myself to act on it. There was no way I could accomplish anything alone. I'm basically helpless on my own. Everything about this so completely outside of anything I've ever had to deal with before. So I had no way of having any ideas what I was supposed to do about it. Oh, it can be pretty cruel. Why would he force a boy like me to make such a difficult choice? Yes, he can be. You were made to be part of a more normal, a less tumultuous world. But you've come too far to go back to that. So the least you can do is change the world you're in now. Yeah. I doubt I need you. I need to remind you, but you know, you can can't get in with only my key. You need all three. The other two? They don't feel like feel an ounce of remorse. Taking their keys won't be easy. Easy or not, we have to get them. And I'm sure there's a way. There must be. Just so we're clear. I'm not going to overpower- you're not going to overpower them. The guy with the sword is much stronger than you, and he knows how to use a blade. He's the Lord's bodyguard. So you're getting near the Lord either. You're not getting near the Lord either. Even the two of us together wouldn't stand much of a chance against him. You seem pretty weak from the looks of you. Who knows, maybe I am stronger than you. God, I really want do want to hit this boy. Deep breaths, Michelle, deep breaths. There must be some way we can get their keys. I know they both have people they're close to. Huh? People they're close to? We can talk about that later. Now that you've made a decision, talking with me isn't your top priority, is it? Mm. Mel. Nelly. I'm sorry for involving you in all this. And I'm really sorry for being, well, what I am. I'm no prince, that's for sure. You always swear, my prince, thou, dearest Mel. You did your best to be the brother I wanted you to be. Honestly, I know the way you fawned over me. All that affection just felt so good. What? It made me feel like I was special, important. Having someone to care for me, to pamper, was empowering. That's the kind of guy your brother is. If someone else, some other girl, would ever just show up and call me her prince, say she loved me, I would probably try and act like a prince for her too. Why would you say that? Because all of this, it's been so hard on me, 
such a huge weight on my shoulders that every so often I would think, just how much easier would it be if I could get rid of her? If Morgana was just a regular girl, not a saint or a witch or any of that, just a pretty girl about my age, she might have been the one getting all of my attention instead of you. That's who I am. That's not you, dearest Mel. You're just beating yourself up. Maybe you would have chosen her over me. But that wouldn't make you any less of a kind man. How can you say that after everything I just told you? Because, Mel, I... Tell me how despicable I am, Nelly. I'm not the brother you once adored anymore, am I? You're not what I thought you were. But you're still my one and only brother. <sighs> I will never change, no matter what kind of person you become. It was wrong for me to try and make you into my prince, smell. I should have just done my job as your one and only sister in the whole wide world. I wanted to help you as much as you helped me. You kept pushing my fairy tale fantasies onto you. And you did your best to live up to them. And I ended up forcing you to pretend to be someone you're not. That's not true, Nelly. I enjoyed feeling idolized. But you know it couldn't last forever, didn't you? I should have been beside you, not looking up at you. I let you cuddle me. I must have indulged in your love. I thought everything would be alright, as long as you kept telling me how adorable I was. They were like magic words to me. I kept my eyes shut. Starting today, I'm going to do my best to be your sister. I'm all done holding to your fairy tale ideas. I won't make you pretend to be a prince for me anymore. And I won't try to be your princess either. I'm just going to be your little sister. So get back on your feet and stand tall, dearest Mel. I know you'll probably have to pay for what you've done when the sentence goes free. And I know I'll probably cry about it for days. But I won't regret making the decision. I don't know what to say. I wasn't expecting you to handle this so maturely. You're putting your big brother to shame, Nelly. Another one told me that girls grow up faster than boys. Ugh. 
was right about that. Thank you, Nelly, for accepting me, in spite of all the awful things I've done. And for having me as your brother. You're quite welcome, dear Smell. Well, it looks like that's one problem solved. They finally reached the point in their relationship where they belong. She could have come to terms with herself sooner, come to an understanding with him, then maybe she could have reeled in her ideals before she lost control of them. Yeah, maybe. This Nelly and the other Nelly seem to be one of the same essence. They both have a, uh, somewhat excessive love for their brothers. And that love expressed itself by transforming him into a prince. If she could have done the same thing then as she did here, then maybe their tragedy could have been avoided. And this is before then, though. Since they were able to fix things up in this life, maybe it'll have a positive effect on their next life? And this could change the future. They may share the same souls, but they lived in completely different times. Do you really think something like that could have any effect on the lives of people hundreds of years from now? There's no way to be certain, of course. But considering how tightly the two seem to be bound, I doubt it'll have no effect. I hope it has some effect. Giselle. I was there in the mansion as it all happened. And I just stood by and watched. I feel so guilty about that. If I had done something, maybe it wouldn't have turned out like that. I hate what I was then. And what I was until just recently. From the memories left imprinted throughout the mansion, I showed you bits and pieces of their lives. And as I told you their tale, the only thing I contributed was disparaging commentary. I don't feel like you were that critical of them. I absolutely was. I talked about them like they were somehow beneath me. Yes, you did occasionally offer an opinion or someone, on someone or something you showed me beyond the doors. But the fact that you were mostly detached from the events there, so it allowed me to get to the core of their characters. If you hadn't been in, that, in the position you were, so you could tell me the story the way you did, I would never have been able to talk to them and talk them into helping. You contributed more than criticism. Your words weren't for nothing. They made this possible. That makes me feel a lot better hearing that from you. And if you still regret your inaction, then make up for it now by taking action here. And have faith it'll bear fruit in their next lives. I will. I wonder if Morgana might have a change of heart, too. It's not like Mel wanted to bring her so much pain. And he deeply regrets what he did, so maybe she won't quite... She won't bear quite as much resentment for him when she learns that. Yes, I know what you're going to say. 
If that was enough to assuage her, she wouldn't have held on to her hatred for all those hundreds of years. Dissuage. Sorry. Still, though. I hope it does something for her, however small. As do I. Just having a fucking cut. Just having a goddamn talk with my ghost GF, and this dude's still fucking here. <laughs> I think we might need to stand in Mel. <laughs> Time for his ass to spark Apologize. Oh, I, had to, I wanted to get up and walk for a bit. Okay. Um. <clears throat> It's um gotten pretty late, so I'm going to take Nelly back to the cottage. Okay. If you have some secret plan to get the other two keys, could you fill me in on it tomorrow? Sure. Also, I could get you another room if you wanted. This one isn't the nicest. Oh, no, it's fine. I've come to realize I'm more at home in less comfortable environments. M Michelle. Am I just imagining it, or was that uh, as depressing as it sounded? That's not quite what I was going for. Well, anyway... If you're if you're fine with it, suit yourself. I say, uh, I've got one huge lingering question. If you wouldn't mind enlightening me. Yes. Why would you go to such lengths for me? You seem to know Morgana, so I can understand why you would be fighting for her. But me, I had a part in putting her in that tower. You have every reason to hate me. So why would you want to help me? This is all it took for me to hate someone. I would curse every last man and woman in the world. I bear no animosity towards you. And even if I did, you've committed to take action. That doesn't explain why you were so concerned about us. It almost seemed... Like you actually cared for me and Ellie. But we're complete strangers. We just met today. Because some part of me couldn't think of you as, a, as strangers anymore. Huh? That's right. When he came by this afternoon to talk, he didn't feel like a stranger to me either. It was weird, like he'd known me my whole life. 
Så jag menar inte min second brother. Your second brother? You're more than welcome to change that order, Nelly. Make him number two and me number one. Uh, I wish I could join in and be big sister number one. Hmm, I'll have to think about it. After all that, you might be number one material. What? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Why is that even up for consideration? <laughs> I'm just kidding, dearest Mel. Uh oh. I'm still kind of confused. But anyway, I'm glad someone like you showed up. I've actually been praying every night. For God to send someone who can get me out of this. I really am useless all on my own. Constantly looking for someone to help me. Unable to do anything myself. And trust me, I realize how pathetic that is. Now you, you must have had a pretty good life to be able to be so proactive in the face of adversity. I bet you had everyone's respect, helped everyone, helped people in need, had plenty of friends who had your back, and weren't tossed out by your family like me. I'm sorry, hold on, give me a minute. Okay. Times like these, when I say Fata Morgana is a comedy. <laughs> uh, this fucking makeup is so pretty. Everybody's, everybody's in general, it's just so fucking pretty. Like these sprites, these sprites are just so fucking fantastic. Um, you, you must have been incredibly blessed. I'm jealous, really. Sorry, that came out of nowhere. I know. Well, <laughs> well, I should be going. See you tomorrow. Good night, Michelle. Brother number two. Good night. Michelle, he didn't, he wasn't trying to be. Yes, I know. I just thought it was rather funny. I'm not taking a stand because I've been blessed, but because I've got nothing left to lose. I fight for Morgana because I understand what it's like to be tortured day after day, having experienced the loss of my siblings. I didn't want the two of them to go through the same thing. <laughs> if anything, it's those who have lost the most that are likely to take action. I'm not sure if you've realized it or not, Michelle. Hmm? But... You've gotten to be a great deal more expressive since arriving in this era. I can't see your face, but I can hear it in your voice. And I can feel it in your presence. So I'm sure it's showing there too. Making all sorts of faces I've never seen before. Some of the things you've lost, and you seem to be getting back. You can't say you've got nothing left to lose anymore. 
and promise me you'll let me see all these new faces for myself someday. I will. I promise. If you can manage to destroy the mansion, that should release you from its darkness and allow us to see each other once again. I trust you. I have faith we can do this. Wait. But within the mansion's, but with the mansion's destruction, both our souls shall be returned to their rightful places. Which would mean erased from existence. Mm. Giselle? What? I just thought I sensed you grimacing. Uh, <laughs> oh wow, you felt that. What's the matter? Sorry, I didn't want to bring down the mood. It's just, well... And I know this is asking for the moon, but... I was just thinking it would be nice if you had a life you could go back to. If I did. Yeah, I mean, here you are, expressive as you've ever been, walking around outside, being around other people, and talking to them after all that time in the mansion. And without a life of your own to go back to. I'm sorry. I just... After seeing behind your door... And learning how cruel and humane life was to you... I feel like... The world could stand to do something good to make up for it. It's not all the good it needs to. I have someone who cares enough to lament my fate. What more can I ask for? Michelle. Thank you, Giselle. You're not the only one who's asking for the moon either. I wish I could have a life with you as the person I am now. And for that, knowing I have no future, feels worse now than ever before. Alrighty, that's enough moping around for one night. We should start planning for tomorrow. Things are definitely looking up. It only took one day to get Mel on our side. So let's keep it up and run over the other two. I would certainly like to, yes. Where did all that confidence go? The other two won't be nearly as easy to convince as Mel. I'm not even sure if we'll be able to talk, to talk them into helping. We do have a pretty good idea of who the swordsman in this for, though. The nun. So maybe we can get to him through her, like we did today with Nellie and Mel. Maybe. Alright, then we'll start by approaching her tomorrow. Sounds like a plan. The lower bow. I'm not so sure about. I'm assuming he's from behind the third door. Glad we didn't run to anyone he was close with today. Mm. And then Morgana's telling of the events of the Harvest Festival. He only mentions five dead people. She only mentions five dead people. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Lord, the Swordsman... Mel, Nellie, and the nun? There's one person I accounted for. We just haven't run into them yet, that's all. If he's the man from the third door, I can't imagine. She won't... be 
be here too. Just losing my confidence now. In any event, tomorrow we could we talk to the nun. I only hope it goes as well as it did today. You've got me. You don't have anything to worry about. Or, all things considered, you might not even need me. I, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. You handled it all pretty amazingly, though. I'm not gonna lie, my heart was pounding the whole time. I was afraid you were gonna sl Sorry. I was afraid you were gonna slip up and say something boneheaded. Is something bumping in the background, Giselle? <laughs> I mean, this party might be bumping. D d damn, when do I get to go to the mine party? Shit. <laughs> but you managed to keep it together, and I didn't have to come to the rescue. Ah, uh, um, I, well, uh... I could make a book of quotes out of your performance today. Oh, for the love of God, please don't. So I'm not concerned at all. Say whatever you think is the right thing to say. I'm more than happy to sit back and watch. The more you pile on the expectations, the more afraid it makes me that I'm going to trip up. Besides... I don't think I could have done any of that without you. Why not? Well, my life was hardly as pride-worthy as Mal seemed to think. But I didn't really feel like I had the right to talk to him like that. But knowing you were there, urging me on, was what allowed me to act without hesitation. So, um... Thank you. No thanks necessary. But if you say so, then you're more than welcome. I'm glad I could be of assistance, if just a little. That you are? Now, let's keep this momentum up tomorrow. It's getting a bit late, though. Did I say that I fuck up? Eh, nah, sorry, there uh, you go. So you should probably get some sleep. Mm -hmm. What is it? I kind of don't want to sleep. What? Why not? For somewhat childish reasons. Aw, are you sad you won't be able to hear my voice? <laughs> Are you lonely, you poor, poor dear? I am. That's the last thing I expected you to admit to! Uh, uh, okay, well... Do you want to stay up and talk for a little longer, then? Not too long, though. You need to rest up for tomorrow. And who knows, maybe I'll show up in your dreams if you wish hard enough. <laughs> the fact that I'm even able to talk to with Giselle right now is a miracle and a blessing. So it is avarice for me to yearn for more, knowing I've already been granted so such a great bounty. I want to see her face as much as she wants to see mine. She's in infinitely more expressive than me. And I want a good long look at all those many expressions up close. I want more than her voice. I want her whole body. I want to feel her warmth. In this era, I have all five of my senses in full working order. As I did when I was alive. Giselle, though, she doesn't. She remains dead. As lively as she may be now, that's one thing she did not get back. I should really wish she could have been here, too. She would have certainly found more joy in a renewed life than me. And she certainly belongs under the sun far more than I do. 
but she, rather than me, was the one left behind in the realm of darkness. A fact that frustrates me immensely. In life, I would have considered her remark about seeing her in my dreams silly and saccharine. But now, I very much hope it happens. It is, in fact, Joshi. Okay. Thank goodness. Oh, do you want to say the wake up bit? <laughs> oh, wait! Oh, fuck, that's right. That was you, too. Oh, shit. Wake up. Come on. Wake up, please. Come on. Up with you. Oh, thank goodness. You were out for so long. You were out so good. I was scared you might have been dead for a minute. Good morning. How are you feeling? What? Huh? Why are you looking at me like I just kicked your cat? It's incredible how much more pleasant it is to be woken up by a woman than a boy. Uh, that's the thanks I get for waking you up. Or did I interrupt the nice dream? <laughs> I did, didn't I? And it was a dirty dream too, I bet. You definitely seem like a more mind-in-the-gutter kind of guy. I will murder you. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not get... Be hasty now. You said you were going to help me out. That doesn't sound very helpful. And the worst part is how similar his wake-up calls... His wake-up call was to Giselle's. I'm just kidding. And you know, I can get up on my own. Fair enough, I guess. Though, put yourself in my shoes for a sec. I came in, and you were still as a corpse. It startled me enough here it took your pulse. You touched me while I was sleeping? It was faint, but it was there. That's wonderful news. They're handing out breakfast in the dining hall. You can go get a plate yourself if you want. It's just some bread and wine, though. Dining hall. There's quite a cr the crowd. All the people are here helping with festival prep, so you should probably hurry in if you want to get some. Hold on, I need a minute. My mind's still waking up. Hmm. Huh? First off, I thought you said the church wasn't offering boarding at the moment, so why a dining hall? Right, it's not, but they do still offer breakfast. For free, of course. I see. Now what do you mean by festival prep? As I mentioned yesterday, the heart of the, har uh, the, heart of the harvest festival is here at the church, but it's a citywide event. There are all sorts of supplies that need to be purchased, uh, decorations made and put up, that sort of thing. So we've got volunteers from the city to help here. I see. I believe today they're supposed to be putting up decorations outside the chapel, so the courtyard should be a bustle. The courtyard? Uh, yeah. Less court, but more yard, really. 
We passed through it on our way uh, here yesterday. Oh, right. I think I know what you're referring to. Uh, so, um, as long as I'm here, I don't have much of a choice but to help with prep. I'd honestly rather set Monk on a free right now. But the other two are bound to find out if either of us do anything too conspicuous. Conspicuous. No. Conspicuous. So, for now, I should stick to my routine. At least where people can see me. That would be the smart thing to do. Yeah. Anyway, let me know if, when you're planning to, on doing anything. If there's anything I can do to help, I will. I'll let you know. Okay, well, I should get going. See you later, I guess. Mel, do you know where I could find the nun? Huh? She should be in the dining hall. Thank you. And the other two men? The Lord and his bodyguard? They're only around early mornings and nights, so I doubt either of them are here right now. Why only them? That's when we go up into the tower. So even if they were on the property, you wouldn't be able to just walk up and talk to them. Especially not the Lord. Also, I don't keep track of where they go or what they do. Sorry. I will. I don't really want to know what they're up to. So I've kept my distance. Understandable. Thank you anyway. <laughs> See you later. He's holding together fairly well, all things considered. And finally resolving to do something about Morgana took a big weight off his shoulders, I guess. Oh, Giselle. Good morning, Michelle. Morning. It's a bit soon to be feeling relieved, I think. There's still work to be done before Mel can face Morgana. That first step is still a big one, though, at least for him. I suppose. Anyway, it sounds like the Lord is going to be difficult to make contact with, which is what I was afraid of. Our only opportunities are when he's here to feed Morgana. Mel did say he didn't keep close tabs on the two of them, so maybe there might be more than just that. First priority is getting you fed, though. So, off to the dining hall we go. Out of curiosity, did you sleep at all? Uh, <laughs> I haven't been sleepy once since I became the maid. But I'm just used to it, so don't worry about me. You said you'd see what I'm seeing there in the darkness, didn't you? And that's what it looks like, at least. Which means when my eyes are closed, she has no light at all. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to sleep after all. I know what you're thinking, Michelle. And no, you're wrong. You need your sleep. You don't have the energy to do anything if you keep yourself if you don't keep yourself well rested and nourished. You're right. We should get going. To the dining hall. I make my way through the halls to the room with the fireplace. Yeah, I used to live in the live use uses the living room, and the area currently serving as a dining hall. 
Sitting in the center of the room is a long table lined with the bread and wine. Standing behind the table are, and handing out food for the long line of the people is the nun. This being a church, no one is speaking especially loudly, but there is still an indistinct buzz hanging in the air as dozens of people whisper back and forth. The majority of people in the room look poor, like they genuinely need the assistance, but there are a handful of those who look more than well off. That's a lot more people than I was expecting. They don't turn anyone away. Which, as I recall from Morgana's account, nearly drained the church of everything it had at once. They don't seem to be... They don't seem to be for want of supply... Holy shit. They don't seem to be for want of supplies at the moment, though. I assume that's thanks to the Lord's... To the Lord's patronage? More or less, most likely, yes. In any event, I doubt we're getting anywhere near her in the mornings. She looks like she's got her hands full. But it doesn't change the fact that we need to speak with her. I'm going to try and squeeze past the crowd. What? Michelle, wait a sec. And now, not cutting in line, young man. We've been waiting since dawn. Please let me through. I have business with the nun. And let me through just because you told me to. This is important. No more important than any of our business. Our lives depend on this food. So get your tail to the back of the line. Here we go. What seems to be to travel? I ask him out for a moment of your time. To speak with you. I, uh, well, as you can see, I'm a bit occupied. I won't take much of your time, I promise. But it's very important you. Give it a rest already, young man. Can't you see she ain't interested? Give me a hand getting this guy out of here, fellas. Uh, where, where, where? Um, just don't get rough, okay? Of course, I'll send this. Pick it up, young man. You need some time outside to cool off. Stop, watch the hair! That went extraordinarily well. You know, Michelle, sometimes I can't tell whether you're calculated or reckless. Now I realize I never got that bread. We should wait and try to talk to the nun when she's not so busy. She has to have some free time during the day. You're right. What do you say we take a look around the mansion while we're waiting? Who knows, maybe we'll run into someone else. Alright. <laughs> Don't let it get to you. I love him, he's so stupid. <laughs> As Mel said it would be, the mansion was packed compared to yesterday. And most everyone I saw appeared to be excited for the upcoming Harvest Festival. A number of them even greeted me as we passed in the halls. They were no so, they were so nonchalant about it I wasn't quite sure how to react. I was amazed at anyone, let alone multiple people, which for me so normally considering how far from normal I looked. There were a few surprised looks of course, but no one called me a demon or an angel based solely on my appearance. Perhaps they were just used to seeing people of all different colors about around the city, so they had an easier time accepting the way I looked. 
No matter what the reason, though, it was quite nice being treated normal. After meandering through the mansion for a while, I made my way to the chapel. Despite knowing I have no way into the tower, part of me still wants to be near it. So I head around to the back side of the podium, where the stained glass window towers over me. It's the same as I remember. I've always loved this window. It makes me feel like I've got an angel watching over me. Hmm. Had I been given a different name, maybe I would feel the same. That said, I don't dislike it as much as I used to. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Up to the side at the very back of the room is the door leading to the observation tower. It's chained shut, but that's no surprise. The lock is the same one I saw back in the mansion. But the chains are just dragging the chains. There's no glowing, they're not glowing with that awful black light. They're simply dull and gray. Mm -hmm. If only I had an axe, then we could just chop the door right down. I don't think an axe would help. There were wood, maybe, but this is metal. Rather heavy at that. You never know. Hit it enough and anything will break eventually. We'd be in chains ourselves long before we made it through this door. Oh, I think I know who this is, yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> uh, uh. It's him. I was under the impression you and the Lord were only around mornings and nights. Then why would you know that? I, uh... Oops. Who are you? He's getting suspicious, Michelle. Uh, I, I'll take care of it. I'm... I'm a friend of Mel's. A friend of his. Does that surprise you? Never once have I seen a friend of his before. He has plenty of friends, I'm sure. No one has had an opportunity to pay him a visit, that's all. Never mind the boy's social dealings. Was he the one who told you my schedule? That I work for the Lord? Got to be careful about what I say here. Or you're gonna start getting suspicious of Mel. I asked him. Asked him what? I heard someone talk, ar talk around town saying the Lord was seen coming in and out of the estate on more than one occasion. Naturally, that caught my attention. A lowly peasant like myself almost never has the opportunity to cross paths with the Lord. So, hearing you as a regular visitor here, I was hoping to have the honor of catching a glimpse at him. When I asked Mel about the Lord, he mentioned that he had a bodyguard, which got me wondering what kind of person would someone so distinguished entrust his life to? Dig around too much and you're liable to end up in the ground yourself. So we told you I was the Lord's bodyguard. Was he not supposed to for some reason? No. It's true, I am his bodyguard. The question is... How did you know it was me? It wasn't difficult. You do rather stand out from the crowd. From Mel's description, I was able to recognize you almost immediately. If our roles were reversed, you would have a similarly little trouble identifying me from the short description. The only thing distinct about me is my race. Where did you come from, if I may ask? Beyond the Silk Road. From the east, then? What country? Is that any of your concern? No, I'm just curious. Why is your hair white? Why are your eyes red? 
They're naturally that color. Is that so? Nature can be quite the ball and chain. Is it just me, or does it sound like he's sympathizing with you? It's hard to say. Honestly, I'm still having trouble rating him. Either way, it sounds like he bought your explanation. So it does, which is a relief. Now, what business do you have with this door? <sighs> the door was not my objective. I can look at the stained glass window. I happened to notice the door with an unusual lock off to the side, so I got curious and went to go look at it up close. The area behind the pulpit is off limits. I was unaware. Maybe I have to put up ropes then. Why is it off limits though? Is that any of your concern? No, but the way you're talking about it has piqued my curiosity. Do you not know how to keep your nose out of places that don't belong? That you don't belong. Get out of here! And don't come back. As you wish. Hold on. Yes? Your name? Michelle. Michelle. Almost the same as the angel there. That would be because I was named after him. I see. What an unfortunate name. I despise angels. May I ask what yours is? I have no name. You don't have... What do you... No, never mind. Farewell. Oh wow, that was scary. He does not want anyone getting near that door, huh? I thought he was gonna pull a sword on you. I wonder, would I die if, she, if he tried to kill me? There aren't many people who could get away from a blade like that, especially in his hands, unharmed. You're probably right. Having already died once, the idea of doing so again feels wrong somehow. You managed to talk him down, though. I'm surprised. You're quite the accomplished liar, Michelle. Is that so? Hard to believe that was the same awkward stuttering Michelle that I know and love. Am I really that much of a bumbling fool normally? I wonder what he was doing back there, though. It's well past dawn. Standing watch, presumably. With as many people as there are roaming about, he's probably worried about people, like me, getting near the door. I thought he plans on spending much more time anywhere else until the festival's over. And with him on guard, we've got pretty much no access to the door. I sure hope we can talk him over to our side. Mel was never an, a, never an enthusiastic accomplice. His guilt is what allowed him to win over and get, a, get him to confess everything. On the other hand, he's not likely to be so forthcoming. It all depends on how deep his ties to the nun are. Presumably, she's the reason he's involved. That said... Hmm? We managed to communicate well enough. Are you still sore that I called you awkward? No, I don't mean me. I meant him. What? Oh. He was far from rational or coherent when he, when he was living with you in the mansion. You're right. He does seem like a completely different person here. 
Losing his memory in the shipwreck was probably what triggered his transformation into the beast. So I guess this must be what he was like before that? What he carried inside him is no different now than it was then. He's only able to hold himself in equilibrium now. He's keeping a balance between his rational human side and his violent beast side. He does somewhat remind me of Bestia during his short period of calm. That are the glimpse we got of him on the ship, while he was still a merchant. I'd say it's probably closer to the man here now. Huh? The ship? You were the one who showed me that memory. What? I, um... I have no recollection of that. Um, yeah, and you also mentioned seeing another woman's memories behind the second door, didn't you? From outside the mansion? You didn't see them, though, as I recall. All I'm aware of is what took place within the mansion. As well as aware... Well, as well as whatever Morgana felt like telling me. Resonation. What? Nothing. Morgana mentioned something about me resonating. I don't know why I would be capable of such a thing. But because of what it allowed me to see, it's all but impossible for me to ignore the plight of these people. Anyway, the point is, however rational he may appear, you mustn't forget that, that this is not the whole picture. He is as much of a killer in this life as he was in the next. He's a man of many faces. The gentleman he was around his the gentleman he was around his lover, the brutal, merciless man that he was in the ship, and the beast that looks beneath it all. Everyone acts differently depending on who they're around. Something unsettling about how he does it. I do wonder what he meant by it when he said he had no name. As I recall, he was from somewhere far, far away in the second door. And he looks Asian here too, so maybe he's from the same country? He said he crossed the Silk Road. To the eastern end of the continent, presumably. I wonder if he has the same name or not. It was an unusual name. Oh, what was it? Um... A ukulele? No, that wasn't it. It was... Eucalyptus, I believe. Nah. I get the feeling we're both wrong and that I'm farther off than her. It's not the kind of name we're used to hearing or saying. Hopefully we'll be able to get it out of him. Hopefully. But for the time being, we should go looking for the nun. Imagine she doesn't, like, like, ha she doesn't have her hands quite as full by now. Probably not. Into the courtyard we go, then. Alright, mm -hmm. probably, probably this is going to be the best place we're going to get to yeah. fucking stop anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Cool. Beans, second s fucking page of saves. It's not black. It's not black. It's look at that light. It's sunny. God, yeah, it's, it's so it's so nice. I wish I could be there. Not 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 during the horrible parts of the time period, but I could. Be, I want to be there. <laughs> Are you saying you don't want some nice, delicious blood of the saint? No. <laughs> I feel like I could do with some of that. I love some horrible blood-based diseases. You turn into a smoothie. Hell yeah, brother! I'll and you get, that. and you apparently get free wine. No wait, no, like they're charging people. I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like I'd say something, and they'd probably want to stone me for existing. <laughs> um, to be fair, that's all this year. I just, I don't want to be there. Yeah. 
He's got a really. They don't even have adequate drinking things like water. You can die from the water. What were we gonna say, Sam? I was gonna say B's got a problem with time traveling that most of the rest of us don't. <laughs> oh, really? Wait, what? Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, you do. Actually, you do, don't actually, you? Yeah. You could actually you talking about? do it within this time. You would just be seen as like a weird foreigner. But... Go too much oh, for yeah. the future, though. That's, that's then cool. it becomes. Like, Racism hasn't been invented yet, it seems. <laughs> like, you, have, you could probably episode. make in the Roman Empire fine. No, Enough. the Roman Empire would definitely do horrible stuff to eat. Do you think? Do you think? Too. Do you think Doctor Who is the Tardis no, has absolutely. like has special anti-racism magic Four that makes it so people aren't racist to you? Left-handed. That would be I nice. Think, I think they were actually racist in some of the episodes where it was There's relevant. There's literally an episode mm -hmm. where they go back in time and meet Rosa Parks. Oh jeez. Oh yeah. But I mean, like, no, no but I mean, like, I mean for the uh... the third season, uh, companion is black, and I believe. If anything that would be relevant, they specifically meet with people who would be okay with Listen, it. Listen, I don't like, even have to time travel back that far, like... What media you have? <laughs> my, family, my parents were born, I think racism might... I think the laws of segregation were just then in sync, so like... Well, luckily, we have defeated racism, and it yeah. no longer exists. Right. It's <laughs> true, racism is racism. no more. Good job, everybody. We did it. We did it! <laughs> We did it, Reddit. <laughs> okay, but more to the point. Uh, how do you, how's everybody feeling about this? About this? About, about, about the last two it's hours? It, oh, it, I was laughing it, the entire time. See, <laughs> you, you did it. It's a comedy. Uh, I went to go back to listen to my performance because comedy I of errors, I, maybe. I, I, I did. I thought I did a pretty good job, and boy, I forgot I had noise suppression on. Fuck me, I guess. Yeah, you're noise fine. Dude. You did a good job. Oh, I didn't even notice the noise suppression. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, you still have the fucking memes up. I do- well, no, I just po- I just brought it up because we're at the end of the thing. Oh, I love that fucking Mel Chopper thing. I didn't even know that was a meme that was going on until, like, right after this- that's- I just noticed Goku's in the background. Yeah! Yeah, there is Hey, one. it's me, Goku! Uh, <sighs> yeah, so, like, what is it- what is there to talk about? Um, um, I have one thing that I do want to say. Sure, yeah, go nuts. Is that, I get it, Mel's a bit of a bitch, but I will defend him on this. Like, when when someone has you literally at gunpoint, you could be like, oh, but I would you no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Like, I mean, like it's easy to you, say in that conversation you... to be like, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd fight back or run away. Like, no, you wouldn't. Like, like, it's easier to say that than like, than like to be like, nah, I'd, I'd do it. I'm Humans big strong. Why, yeah, why, why is why is Shinji a bitch? Yeah. I would just pilot the Ava and then sleep with all three of the women. <laughs> yeah, like like and like Karu. no one's no one's <laughs> no no one's like going to be like yeah I fucking I'll, I'll fucking like you know like I I suplex him and you know save more god pretty cool. Like, like you could say that, but like I, I it was legit like I learned this because um. What is it? Uh, I worked at a retail store and they teach you about, like, what if shit goes down and, like, someone comes in there with a weapon. And the response atypically was, you, I think it was, you may talk the game, but when you're in the moment, your brain goes, fuck. That's mm -hmm. true. Well, even then, like, what and is you... it? I mean, even within the context of the story, like, Michelle is, like, Michelle doesn't necessarily, like, to say, no, you're wrong for... Th for being afraid for your life, he's just like, do you want me to fucking pity you though? Like you still didn't do anything. It's, it's, it's well, yeah, that's yeah, fair. There, there was a point where where Mich uh, Michelle's like a little bit like that, but like he kind of walks it back a bit as soon as like Mel goes, no, no, actually, what would have I done in that moment? I, 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 like that's I, a fair I, I point. I can't imagine it's it's any way for, for uh, Mel to be able to like. Affect what uh, you can also can and can't do. I can't. There, there is. I don't think there's anything. There's anything. Anything Mel could have actually done, if would have oh. mattered. I guess I the only like... thing. Mm. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry, it's, it's you, you. You were going first. My mistake. Uh, I guess the only thing like 
you know, getting over to the like, there's nothing he could do in that moment when like Yuki Moss is all up in his crib and all that jazz. But like, once they are out in an open field, <laughs> I, I, I don't what, what do they? What, what does he do that can like? I mean, I to be know. fair, I feel like Mel is probably faster than Yuki Masa. He's I don't think so. I don't think so, I don't think so at all. That, that's Nimble. super not true. That's Just not because true. Mel's smaller doesn't mean you're faster. In that fact, it might mean you're slower. I mean, she she area. Mel is a precious, Ma- a is a precious little uh, prince. prince. Mel is actually a pampered child who got thrown yeah. out mm-hmm. and had to had to fucking wing a horrible regardless, situation. Regardless, I have a second answer to this, but mm-hmm. that will I just will just save that for later. But like, I'm not saying like Mel is completely without sin. I I do think that like, yeah, you can fault him for being a little bit selfish, even though I feel like it does get like that. But I, even that being stated. Yeah, Mel can be a bitch, and I, I I don't know the circumstances, but like, yeah, like he he can be a bit of a bitch. Uh, mm-hmm. May I put like a thought regarding that idea? It's mm-hmm. it's more like just it it seems like he didn't even try to consider other options. No, like, he didn't. It seems like there was not even an attempt to try to figure out what else could be done. He just did everything he was told with no thought put towards anything. Mm-hmm. He could have even got his um, sister to warn the saint. Mm, no, no, no. His no. sister was like sick in she, bed. She, she so. was still sick in bed. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think he wanted. He would have wanted her to get involved with anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he, he literally had the sword to her fucking throat. <laughs> like it is a miracle that Mel uh, Nelly was out at the time and doesn't remember a horrifying moment where a random stranger pulled out a sword to her throat. <laughs> To sleep, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, um... I just kind of put it. It's like it didn't seem like he was even trying to think about Morgana, just or at any other I option. He was super upset. Oh, why? Why when I call her out this time? Why? Why does she actually come? It's so unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I wish she wouldn't have. I mean, that's that's still like very little. It's like he didn't try to think of it's, any. That's other literally all he can do. It's hope, that he, hope, hope, it didn't, it hope didn't even, nothing happened. It said he didn't really even try to, though. It's mm-hmm. like, Look, try you know, what? What try? Any, not try anything. He didn't. He literally didn't know no, what he's he saying. Didn't, he didn't think about trying other things. Yeah. The thing. It's like he didn't like what. I I genuinely no, 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 would have thought. Like, well, that's like that's yeah. like like. I mean, like Mel, to be fair, like Mel's entire like thought process during this entire thing was just well. I don't know how to react to this. I'm well, happy. About I mean, he didn't want to. He didn't really want to. Because, well, because I guess, so. regardless of the mansion, like, what is stopping, I guess the question of the day would have been, what is, would have been stopping him, like, the day after of going to town and being like, hey, there was a dude who stabbed, like, cut off a girl's arm. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, the, the, know, prob- like, the problem I see is the Lord going, well, no, this is a random peasant. Like, don't believe him. Yeah, no, 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 I for sure, like, I I understand I would not have ended well, but, like, that's just one of the things I'm saying, like, the thought never crossed his mind. It's It's just like, like, nope. I would have appreciated if he put, at least tried to think of alternative, even if there was nothing he can do, if he at least tried to think about something to do after the events, like, during the events, I I can't see him, like, his brain is not going to be working during the events, but I'm talking about, like, after... Oh no! Oh dang! Rand. How can you? There goes Rand. Oh, how tragic! Mm-hmm. So, are there other thoughts? Um, I feel like I had one, but now it's not coming to me. I'm not sure much else other than like, what is it? Uh, um, Crimson. Uh... Wait, what? Any thoughts? Not a, not a whole lot that wasn't already touched on. Yeah. It was pretty much just the finishing up of Mel's story of this point and the beginning of the other guys. There's so, more I haven't really to add. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you, sorry, I thought you were done there. Sorry. Anyway. There's no have anything to say. Come on, Noah. Speak up. Speak up. Come on. Guess <sighs> what? Ça va? Got anything to say, buddy? Je suis les enfants. Oh no, he's oh. actually Frenching at me, shit. <laughs> oh. No, he's Frenching it up! 
Man. On tue les garçons en la fille de mon âge. Oh no, it's time to end the stream at this point. None of us speak French. Le fromage. Okay, he just said cut Oh, he speak. said horrible cut curses at us. You can't that, say that, that, that on the stream. Oh, oh no, no, he said something very racist in French. No, he just said omelette with cheese. Uh, <laughs> like that, that entire throughout that entire episode, like that's actually the wrong way. It would be omelette du fromage. That's really funny. I still, I, I should probably reiterate. I don't think Mel is blameless. I just want to reiterate that. But like that being stated, I do think it is a bit unfair to ask a seventeen-year-old to do. A, a very her, uh, Herculean task of figuring out how to navigate not being hardcore murdered with his sister. And the dude also is like, just recently started living on his own. Yeah, he got recently disavowed. He was a he fucking a very soft, he was a fucking was... rich white boy yeah. living There's... in per perfectly comfy, then gets thrown out on his ass. Yeah, I'm not sure you're gonna say living know, in Fresno. I know who I can't count on in a dire situation. Just kidding. I'm fucking around with you. Don't take that. Sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty then, I think that's about good then, everyone. Okay, gonna gonna wrap up the stream then. All right, we all good. Okay. Good night. Okay, cool. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Arrivederci.